I feel like we're, we've been 75, 80% of the way there from hitting the finish line for about the last year and a half. Taking that next step in many cases requires getting through the previous one. We did move on from this super helix. We went back to the drawing board to a point. If it just doesn't quite feel right, then it's not right and we need to explore something else. There's a lot of different variables that all play into us taking a lot of time to, to do this. Getting to the finish line, you know, trying to perfect that up until the last minute. It's been an exciting process, but also very stressful. We've gone down multiple different paths and explored multiple different things, learned things all along the way, all to get to here. But we want to make sure that we uh, do everything we can to really deliver a spectacular product. Looks like we're going to make a new cap, a new tip. Then I guess we need to make a new stem to go with it. Okay, and if we're going to do that, well, then we might as well make a new mouthpiece that goes with that. Well, and if we've done all that, kind of silly to not make a new condenser on top of that. We took a lot of those design elements from the last two years where the masses and thermal breaks. First the M plus, then the M7, where we've got a large amount of mass right above the chamber. That carried over into the Hyperdyne, so we can tweak that a little bit in quite a number of ways. We'll just narrow that material right on down about as far as we practically can to minimize how much cross-section there is for a conductive path with heat to transfer. In fact, let's make it thin to the point that it fails. And sometimes that's hard to get Jason to do. The ultimate goal for me was I want to make as many components as I can without any tool changes required. Change material, change collets, change program, call it a day. I think every part we have in this entire device is at least three minutes, with the exception of the condenser, which I haven't cut yet. But a long cycle time. Yeah, for us, for us it is. He's the yang and I'm the yin. And my yin is make it thin. His yang is don't let the machine go bang. The one that makes me nervous, as always, is the, the smaller five mil drill. Wanted to make sure I got that high pressure going uh, so we don't snap off the drill when it is 34 millimeters buried in the material. You know, you get things parts too thin and there's no cutting edge left. The heart might break in the machine, but now you can end up with things bending and breaking tools and all kinds of other things. Another challenge of machining the cap was we're going to add length. And if you shorten the tip, now the cap length also has to change because now the cap and the digger outer gets closer to the end of the stem. You can't just develop the tip and then develop the cap separately. They're so cohesive to one another. Where's that length gonna come from? We chose the tip. So we're just kind of shortening things up a little bit, try not to make any compromises. As we're adjusting this, how does it affect tolerancing? How does it affect fitment of the two parts? It's sometimes it's a chicken or the egg thing, right? To design a bigger chamber, we need a bigger cap, but the bigger cap needs to fit on this. And how are we gonna connect the two? It's always a crunch to try to get units to VCDC. Not quite right. Well, I gotta change this to make it fit. Well, it's a little bit better, but now this is not great. We're just going in circles. Incremental refinement where we're just moving a little bit closer to the goal here, but a little bit further away over there. And what if we tried that? I think that'll improve machinability. It's a dance. I think in the end, the, the decision was, let's make it the same length as our other XL length devices, because then it just simply fits. That's what we were doing for a good portion of first part of the development of the Hyperdyne, is really dialing in the difference between the tip and the cap, cohesively working together with them. We settled on a one part tip design, wanted to try it out. So it took a little while to get to the point where we finally had a tip and a cap that it's worth going through the time and the investment of sending this out in a beta testing and collecting that feedback. At some point you just have to go, okay, I need to come up with 40, 50 devices. Here's a bunch of them. Let's try to get them to work together and ship them off. But we didn't have a stem. We didn't have a mouthpiece. We didn't have a condenser yet. At the point, we actually had them test specifically with the M7 XL setup for the stem. There were a few different iterations of the cap in particular that went out to the VCDC to try out a few things. One individual would get one, another individual would get cap number three. They all had very slight changes between them. I had a little worry that maybe there would be some air leakage, you know, going through the front of the cap around the snap discs in and then into the chamber. Would that have a pretty substantial effect on the overall experience? Well, that was something we needed to figure out. 
Now we've got something that's worth sharing with a few other people that don't understand the product well enough that can give us some feedback in terms of, are we heading in the right direction? Is the experience working for you as a consumer for what you were trying to get out of a larger capacity, big bull? In order to get the information that you're really looking for, you have to ask the right questions. Now I've done them for pretty much every product that we've sent out to testers for the last couple of years now. This one by far was the most comprehensive that I've had to date. So Troy put together an extensive list of very detailed feature and use case scenario specific questions. Gave them ample time to test the product and then they turned around and filled out our feedback form. In the last couple of weeks here, we were able to take a look at all of that feedback, visualize it as we did have a fair amount of testers with a lot of information, a lot of stuff to really parse through. You know, the good, the bad, the key words that people are picking to use when they describe the product, when they describe the tip, when they describe the performance. So if you're able to visualize it and really connect the dots, you can start making some conclusions on what they're really thinking and the approach that we should take from here on out changes that we need to make to improve the overall product. I get a little impatient when it comes to like, wait two, three weeks, the data that we get is invaluable. Generally speaking, our testing group is very much that high capacity, high tolerance user. They're the ones that are looking for quite a bit of material to get them. You're never gonna have everyone on board 100% of the time. If you have no dissenters at all, you have a problem. That means that either people aren't being honest or that you don't have enough diversity in the group of opinions. So you, you want some people with differing opinions because it means that you're on the right track to a regard. Quick synopsis on the feedback. Um, we gave our testers a number of weeks to use the device really however they please. Um, initially using the M7 stem and um, mouthpiece condenser unit. The results of the questions gave us a whole lot of information. We got the feedback from the VCDC and it was overwhelmingly positive. There was a lot of positivity towards the experience that they were having, the end result of that experience, overall impressions of the look, the style, the modularity was a huge factor here. Overwhelming majority of them really liked the design that we were going with because it emulated that Dynavap experience. The bowl size overall, it actually exceeds what they were hoping for, but we're finding that if you pack it just a little bit lighter, the experience is, we'll call it fantastic. It seems like, yep, we generally have something that's gonna tick the boxes. It delivers that Dynavap experience with much more capacity. Dynavap hit and that Dynavap uh, heat up and cool down. And the simplicity of the device overall. They had critiques, which of course we're looking for, but they thought finally we're on the right track. One of the things of feedback that we did get from them using that stem was just kind of concerns about that heat transfer. You know, we are putting, in some cases, two and a half times as much heat into the tip than we are a standard. We really wanted to make sure that the performance of the heat transfer um, was acceptable. So as we moved into development of the stem, that's something that was very important to us. But again, we asked them to use an M stem much smaller mass than we knew we were going to go with. And, and so we knew we could mitigate that. I end up playing around with other stem configurations to see how it could affect performance. And the one that I personally liked the most during that testing phase was with the bonger. That was when I truly fell in love with what that tip and cap can deliver. We know we have a path. And if we don't deviate too far from that, then I think we're gonna deliver on the experience that people are looking for. It seems like we got the mass pretty close. It had the capacity, it had the heat retention. The heat up time seems like it's within the range of what people are expecting. It seems to stay hot long enough. It didn't take too long to heat up. It didn't take too long to cool down. I think having that rapid heat up and cool down is something very special and unique to Dynavap. And I'm glad that that kind of put us on the path that we are on with the Hyperdyne. It was refreshing to actually have something come back where it's like, okay, you guys are, you're on it. All right, great. So what does that leave for us to do? Keep going. Here's some refinements. Here's some thoughts. Mostly refinements. So we continue to make some changes towards the bottom of the bowl, towards the shape of the bowl, and how uh, the airflow worked through the bottom side of the tip. And a lot of the concerns that we had over potential for air leakage and, and things like that, well, it wasn't a big deal. As we're getting air feedback on the tip and the cap, 
we pretty much finished up the design on the mouthpiece and the condenser. I'm going to kind of emulate what we've, what we've done with the M7. Let's incorporate a similar adjustability range. This has that adjustable condenser with this time seven slots instead of six. I asked Jason, hey Jason, can we please have seven adjustment points in the Hyperdyne mouthpiece? Yeah, we have seven positions that the, the mouthpiece and condenser can go into your right. So just a little bit more control over your airflow, but we retained that very favored feature from the M7 XL. The best depth groove is not the most restrictive and it's not the lowest restrictive. It's actually somewhere right in the middle. So there's a lot of room for personal preference and customization with the Hyperdyne. We definitely left the stem last because I had a, a tip that everyone seemed to like. Okay, I can work with that. The, the stem, that's actually kind of the fun part. Decently sized product feature list that the stem was accommodating that we had to make sure it fit, but at the same time, we kind of had to balance it out, make sure it was something that we could produce in a timely manner and something that our customers would really actually enjoy. To me, it should have like a beefy, heavy stem, feels the part of a bigger unit. We wanted it to be the same diameter as something similar to a Vong, so it could retain that 10 and 14 millimeter. This is one of our biggest requirements. However, I didn't want to just completely emulate what the Vong had already done. People really like the Tider Vong. Why don't we give them something that's kind of on that order? A big combination of numerous factors. You've got Tiger Vong attributes, you've got Vong attributes, notes from a lot of the feedback. Looking at some of the geometry, it's like, oh, hey, you know what? Why don't we just kind of emulate some of the geometry that's on the stem and put on the mouthpiece so they really kind of look like they flow together. We expanded the airport. Um, a lot of that was based off some of the testing and feedback that we received. We always try to make sure that it is easy to locate the airport. And when you have something that's just round, it becomes impossible to do that. It needs to be eye-pleasing. You gotta fill some of that empty space. We're adding the grooves. We're adding a lot of the ergonomics to it. By the end of it, I just decided, let's do the 14 taper, let's do the 10 taper. The stem just needs to be flipped around depending upon the size of water piece that you're gonna be running through this. Let's put in something similar to the Vong Eye where it feels good in people's hands. Let's make it tactile enough where they know where the airport is all the time. They can rotate it in their hands. Kind of feels like a big stogie in your hand. <laughs> it is the, the fat finger stem. At least that's kind of how I see it. If you got big hands, which these are not, um, it was a great stem for you. The whole device is wider in diameter than you've seen on most of our other products. Now I still kind of like it because it just aesthetically fits very well with the large bowl, the hyper tip. I really like the design of the Hyperdyne. I think it takes some of the elements of a highly sought after collector's item, just a solid, sturdy titanium midsection and integrating that into a mainstream product for the first time. Looking back at, at the Helix tip, one thing that came out of that was we got to surface treat the chamber of that to minimize scratching. We kind of knew that we were going to have to do that with this device. We want to ensure that something like the Hyperdyne, you're spending good money on it, that it is going to take the wear and tear and abuse that you know is going to happen with any sort of TED like this. The finish is probably one of the most durable finishes on any product we've ever brought to market as well. I love that you can, you can take a different piece of metal and just try to scrape the living shit out of this thing in it. I can scratch, and I might get something that looks like a scratch, but what it is is just the metal wearing off of the cap or the digger outer, and it'll rub right off. It's just not going to scratch or mar up. So hard that when you put the Hyperdyne into a 10 millimeter or 14 millimeter ground glass joint, if you see what looks like a scratch on it, more than likely you took material from the thing you were using to try to scratch it. They go back into manufacturing to get this, this. I'll let George fill in the technical name for what we're calling that, because I don't recall. It's our hyper durable Duradyne finish. But I love the color. I love how robust it is. I think as long as you're not tying it to rope and dragging it behind your car for a long distance. It's going to look really, really good for decades, if not for generations. Feels really good to be done with the Hyperdyne. So here we are at the end of a multi-year journey to figure out the Hyperdyne. And I look forward to getting the feedback and getting it out in the wild and letting people kind of give us, you know, that feedback. It's like, we haven't released anything like it before. Paid a really close attention to a lot of details, a lot of features, a lot of feedback from our users and testers, and really tried to uh, hit it out of the park with this. I am happy with it. I think that it, it, it looks great. It has the functionality. An overall device that 
is very modular with almost everything we've ever made. Throw it on an M plus stem. Looks a little different, but it'll work. The stem can fit other tips. The mouthpiece can be used on other devices, so it retains the compatibility. Any case, any holder, any stash that is an XL length, this will fit in. The tip and the cap is effectively the same length as any other tip and cap combination. So they, they definitely have to go as a pair, but you can, you can put that on anything else we've ever made. The stem will work great, uh, both how you see it here, or flipped. And it works very well in the wand. My favorite feature is that big bowl. It's something that I've been personally waiting for for a very, very long time. It's an average of 0.25 grams, which is a lot for me. I've tried many of the other big bowl variants out there. And this is the one that I keep coming back to because I am an impatient individual and I don't like having to wait multiple minutes to, it just keeps going and going, check the doneness of it or to uh, reload or reheat. Uh, so I can just hit this how I'm used to. I'm a creature of habit and I'm really digging it. You have the ability to do that one hit extraction if you're after that, but it, it does have a nice even roast. Good flavor too, if, if you want to kind of back off the heat. You can really kind of tweak this in so many different ways to really fine tune the experience to how you like it. I guess one of the biggest ones, it's a complete titanium construction from tip to cap to stem to condenser to the new mouthpiece. So everything on this product is brand new. Nothing is, is reused from previous products. It's all developed for specifically for the Hyperdyne. If this was stainless steel, it would be a lot heavier. A lot of times I'll be sitting on the couch watching a movie, playing a game, and I can take my hit have it sit in my mouth, if that's stainless steel, it's going to just be fatiguing. And if it's fatiguing, I'm going to be less likely to reach for it. If it fails the reach test, it's not good enough for me to continue using in my day-to-day -day life. Going through everything that we did in order to get the Hyperdyne done really lends itself to what are we doing next with it. I think the Hyperdyne opens a whole other world of products. This is a brand new line. This isn't just a new device. It's a whole new family of thermal extraction devices from Dynavap that still works within the Dynavap ecosystem. I'm very excited to see kind of where it goes, how people are gonna end up kind of receiving it, and what they're gonna be able to do with it. What can we do next with the Hyperdyne? Well. Finishes, textures, colors. And I have four sitting over there that I, you know, did myself. Can't see those because they're a little special. We really want to see what you can come up with using our devices as a canvas. You know, you can take raw material and you can take a torch to it. You can anodize it. You can coat it really however you'd like. We'll probably be continuing down this with further iterations, with different stems, different types of caps like you've seen us do before. That's one of the coolest benefits to titanium is that it is endless an opportunity of what you can do with the actual coating. This opens a whole brand new world for us to do other large capacity uh, tips and caps and continue the innovation that you know from Dynavap.